Hello again, it's Dolly with Crafty Mermaid Mom. Today I'm here with a tutorial video for you guys and you may recognize what I have laid out here. These are my shaker tags or my um, shakers. I know that I had shown you guys these in a previous video and I actually got um, a couple of requests to do a tutorial on how to make these cute shaker tags in all sizes and colors. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to make this as easy and simple as possible so I am just going to show you guys the basics because you know you guys know what you can do with all of your leftover paper and the sizes and shapes that you want to create. So to make these tags you can make them in just a regular you know size that can fit in a pocket letter, a flip book or whatever you choose to put them in. I also created bookmarkers because I like bookmarkers and you know I always have random pieces of paper that you know are shaped long and narrow so I typically use those for making my bookmarkers. So you guys decide on the shape and size that you want and the design that you want. Another thing that I normally do is put words or phrases or sentiments on these and you can buy a sticker pack also you guys can get the vellum sentiments they sell them just about anywhere i like the clear stickers from hobby lobby from joann's or from michael's um they lay flat and they don't move because obviously they stick to the paper this one right here if i show it to you a little bit closer you will see that it's just a vellum piece of paper with the word inspire on it and i just cut these i had these from a vellum pack from years ago and i decided to use them and these are nice too the only problem with these is that you can see that it's not adhered to the paper because it's you know vellum's got that kind of fuzzy look so it's on here and it's not going to move and all i've done is i taken some glue and just dabbed a little on each corner so that it would stick so with vellum you can still see the design of the paper behind it it just makes the paper a little bit duller to see so for me if i had to choose i would probably choose the clear stickers to make these but that i'm going to leave that up to you guys you guys decide on how you want to put that together the other thing that i wanted to show you guys is the only thing with making these tags is you are going to need some kind of a fusing tool and um, I have this fusing tool and this is by We Are Memory Keepers. And I think I ordered this on eBay. It was fairly cheap. I wanna say it was maybe $18 or something like that. That's from what I can recall because I had purchased this about a year ago. So if you guys you know, wanna look around at your crafting stores, you may be able to use a coupon and get it for less. I'm not sure, but um, check it out right now. I'm just waiting for this fusing tool to heat and my suggestion would be that if you guys are going to start making these practice first practice getting a handle or getting a grip on this fusing tool because that's the only trick to it It's very simple. It's very easy to make these tags but you need to make sure that you're comfortable using this fusing tool and just be careful with it because you are dealing with a tip that's very hot and you don't want to burn yourself. So I'm going to put this aside for a while while I talk about other things. All right, so what you're going to need to gather as well are your ribbons because you are going to need the ribbons for your tags um, when you're done doing your tags. Um, and another thing is you're going to have to go ahead and choose what um, glitter or sequence you would like to put into your tags. As you can see, what I have here is I've just got my teacup full of um, just the regular uh, iridescent glitter. I like to use this for almost all of my shakers. And you guys, I don't know why, but to me, this is the prettiest glitter to use because it's just so shiny and it just glitters. It's just so pretty. Now, if you wanted to use sequins, you can just use sequins and just select random pieces. Let me grab my sequins box. See, I have um, a sequence box over here and I just purchased these so I can use gold stars if I wanted or I have these larger pieces of sequence and once in a while if I have something and you know this butterfly probably you know would look cute in it I can add it to the inside so sometimes I do set aside certain things like if I'm doing a um, 
beach theme. I do have some shell pieces, clear shell pieces that kind of float around in there nicely. So what you can do is you can take your random pieces of, you know, butterfly or shells that you may want to use and put those aside because you can also insert those into your shaker cards and they look really cute. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and um, get ready. I'm gonna put these aside and I'm going to show you guys what I um, use to make these shaker tags. Um, I'm gonna show you the plastic uh, clear page protectors that I use and basically that's all I use you guys. All I use are these clear page protectors. My only suggestion would be that um, if you are buying these clear protectors to use as your um, shaker covers, just make sure you get one that's, you know, at least a little bit of a better quality than the flimsy ones because I know there are some flimsy ones that are really thin and you know with the thin ones the only thing my only complaint with those is that when they crinkle up or if you accidentally mark them you can see that because they are so thin these ones are probably medium quality so they're not super expensive but they're not the super cheap ones either so that's my only suggestion is if you're going to go through the work to put these together at least use the plastics that um have a little bit more quality to them okay so um i think i just got these at walmart and the other thing that i wanted to tell you guys is when you are using your heating tool i would highly recommend or actually you should because you're going to burn whatever you guys are using underneath use a craft mat use something that you don't mind scratching up or something that you don't mind gets dirty or you know burnt or you know damaged a little this is an old Fisk, uh, Fiskers two-sided craft mat and it's one of those self-healing mats but you know I've been using it forever and you could even see some of the um, the damage that the fusing tool has done on this but it's okay I don't care because that's the purpose of this mat I didn't expect to keep this mat you know in great condition so i was prepared for it to get damaged okay so anyway what you first want to do is you want to make sure you have all of your cut papers ready so you guys all i'm doing just for ease of this video is i am using leftover paper i just did a um, project recently using one paper pad and then also a graphic 45 i think that's what it was um, paper pad and I had a lot of leftover paper well I had been meaning to make more of the pocket size tags for you know my pocket letters and so what I did is I took all of my leftover pieces and I went ahead and cut them to get them ready and then I took my words or my phrases and I went ahead and stuck those onto these cards which you should probably be prepared before you start using your fuser so I have stuff that says hope, create, be you, be happy, dream big, live, be kind. So, you know, just go through your stickers and see what you have and just make um, your cards ready so that when you're ready to fuse, they're there and you can um, stick them inside the pockets before you actually start to fuse, okay? So I'm gonna put these aside because I want to go ahead and get my paper ready. Or not my paper, I'm sorry. I wanna get my... Um, plastic ready. So what I want to do first then is I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to insert them into this um, page protector and I'm going to make sure that this is all the way down to the corner, the first one, okay? So I have it all the way down to the corner and you guys, the fusing tool does come with a fusing ruler it looks like this at least this brand does um and so you can use this it's really helpful um because it will make sure that your um that your line where you fuse is going to be straight so i'm gonna go ahead and start fusing because i think my fusing tool may be hot enough already i'm hoping that it's hot enough already so what I want to do is I want to take my tool now that I've got my um, card in there and I'm just going to fuse this against the ruler okay so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press fairly hard on this 
and go a little past where the card ends because I'm gonna have to seal this, okay? So I wanna do a couple and um, I'm gonna go ahead and not finish this off yet because I wanna do more. Okay, so now um, what I wanna do is I'm gonna take another card, but before I take this other card, I'm gonna have to create a new line because I am going to have to cut this and this is really important to remember you guys because um, every time that I had done this, I was going a little too fast and what I would do is I would forget to make a double line and I would, I would go ahead and butt this against this line and then I'd do another one and remember how am I supposed to cut it because then you're gonna have one side open. So just remember, double line between each card, okay? So I'm going to take my ruler again and I'm going to do another line because I'm going to start a second one. So I'm gonna take that and I'm going to do about the same height, okay? And now I'm ready to stick my other card in there, okay? So there you go. Okay, so now I can seal this one and just follow along with me because this gets really easy, you guys. And I'm telling you, it's very addictive because once you see how cute um, what you created comes out, you are just gonna have so much fun with it and you're gonna wanna make more. So, okay, so now, reminder, I gotta do another um, double line because I am going to prepare to put another card in there um, and I swear it's so frustrating you guys because when I did this last week I kept forgetting the double line I don't know I was just rushing you know through it too quickly that I would forget the double line so okay let's do we're gonna do be happy let's do these and it's so fun, you guys, like especially if you have a, pa a favorite paper that you like, um, you know, doesn't have to be a remnant, just cut a piece of that paper uh, um, out and you can create whatever you want with it. And for me, I just choose to use my um, leftover scrap of scraps of paper because I don't like to see anything go to waste. So that is what I normally do, okay? Okay, all right, so as you can see, you cannot fit another one here unless you wanted to do a really skinny, tiny one, which I doubt you would wanna do. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you closer where I've fused. This side right here, I didn't have to fuse because this is already closed off. I fused here, I fused here, I fused here, here, and here, okay? So now we're gonna close off the top, but before we close off the top, we need to insert our glitter or whatever it is that you're gonna put in there, your sequence. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go ahead before I even um, close this off and I wanna cut this, okay? I wanna cut this because I can still use the other half of this, you guys, for um, you know more tags. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this, well, this doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm just gonna cut halfway. You guys can measure it if you want a perfect line, but I know I'm just gonna cut this piece off anyway. So there you have it. Um, so far you've got that done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut these edges off just to separate all of these tags so that I can start putting in um, the glitter or the sequence, all right? So there's one. And sometimes, you know, you can go back and cut off extra pieces of the um, plastic that you feel like you didn't get the first time. I don't like to cut too close to the edge because I don't want to take a chance on um, ripping the seam open. So I'd rather have extra plastic than to have the seam rip open. And you guys, when you're using your fusing tool, make sure that it's hot. I think, you know, you should at least give it about um, five to eight minutes. I like to give it 10. And then last week I was using my fusing tool so long and I didn't realize, oh, I thought it broke. It just stopped working. 
and I kept trying to figure out what was wrong with it and I think that it might have an automatic shut off after it's been on for like more than an hour which is great because I don't want to set the house on fire but at the same time it was really frustrating and then I, I what I did is I unplugged it and then I replugged it and it worked again so you guys if you have this fusing tool tell me if that's normal if it does have an automatic shut off because I really want to know I wasn't sure if you know mine was um, defective or what so I'm gonna cut a little off the top because I don't want to have a hard time when I'm trying to um, put the sequence in and at the same time too don't cut off too much because you're gonna have to close that top off okay all right okay so now I'm gonna take my sequence I just stuck my sequence in my teacup <laughs> thought it was pretty all right so you know, normally what I do is I like to have them on both sides, but I don't put too much in. And you guys, look at these cute little shovel spoons. I had gotten these like probably about a year ago or even more than a year ago, but I got these because they're flat. Look how flat they are, but they've got a little bit of a scoop to them so that when you're trying to stick these in here, you know, they fit, they go right into these really easily. And I think I bought like this big pack Hold on one second, let me show you guys. So see, I think this was from Dollar Tree, their Happy Party Plastic Ice Cream Spoons. So they're like these little cute flat ice cream um, spoons that um, I got a while back. And I don't know if they still have them, but go to the party section if you guys wanna look for them and see if they have them still. Like I said, I've had this for over a year. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, I don't like to add too much because I want it to to be able to be um, to have the design show too. So I'll probably just do maybe two little spoonfuls, two tiny two tiny ice cream spoonfuls, which is hardly anything when you're using this spoon. See, so look how pretty that is. You can kind of see. I hope you guys can see how pretty that glitter is. Let me show you on the other side. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. You don't need, you don't need a bunch, but you can see it. You can see where the glitter is on that. And that's why I love this iridescent glitter, you guys, or sequence. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill the other two. Um, I didn't make more than three for the sake of keeping this video short, you guys, because I, the main objective of this video is to show you guys how I do it, and then you can get creative on your own, okay? So here's another, and then I'm going to do the last one. And I just love these little, oops, see? I made a mess. Anyway. I just love these little ice cream spoons because they're really easy to work with and they get in your, um, I think I put too much on the other side. Okay, well that works, okay. So anyway, I'm gonna put this aside now. You can see I've got glitter all over the place, you guys. All right, so now we're ready to seal these, okay? And this is the fun and easy part, is you're almost done. So I want to make sure all of the glitter is way in there because I don't want any of the glitter pieces to get in between where I am actually sealing these. Okay, I don't want it to get where the fusing line is because then it might make it um, flimsy and it might open up the seal. Okay, so now I'm going to take my ruler again if I can find it. Here it is. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to face it this way because I wanna see that my line is straight and I wanna make sure I'm fusing it in the right place, okay? Um, so all I'm gonna do is fuse that shut. I have one and I'm gonna do this one. Okay. And then the last one. Okay, that one's not so straight. And it's not always gonna be perfect, you guys. I didn't, I didn't really follow the ruler on this. I just kind of went straight, but it's not that noticeable. So what you're gonna do now is you want to do a double seal, okay? So from that um, angle, what you're gonna do is you are going to take it again and you're going to do about half an inch or less than half an inch. I would say about half an inch. 
um, and seal that too, right there, okay? So you could see you've got a double line. You've got one here and you've got one here. Okay, I'm gonna do the others. Oops, that one's really crooked too, but it's okay, you guys. I'm trying to make it so that this video um, doesn't take forever. I'm kind of on a time crunch here, so. All right. Okay, that one's a little straighter. But anyway, once you get the hang of it, you guys will be making straight lines, no problem. So what you wanna do then is you're gonna go ahead and cut um, close to where you sealed so that you can finish it off. Okay, all right. See, and you can barely tell. I mean, only I can tell. Only I know that my um, fuser went off the edge. And what you can do is if you wanna cover this um, crooked line, you could always put your hole right here. All right, so you guys are done. Basically, that's it. All you need to do is embellish it now. So what you wanna do is you want to, and I don't have, I didn't bring my hole puncher with me. It's downstairs, so sorry, you guys. So you're gonna just use your hole puncher. You can punch a hole right in the middle. You could do it on the side, and then, you know, have a ball with all of your ribbons, and, you know, take your remnant pieces, you guys, um, of all of your ribbon. Look at my stash here. I've got a ton of ribbon that I can just pull out of my stash and just um, use and work with and just find something to match these and you are done. So after you have made these, you're going to have all of your pretty, beautiful shaker tags that's going to look just like this. And you are gonna go crazy, like I said. So I actually have more to do and I'll probably finish these ones off um, after I do this video. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video and that it was helpful to you. Um, I really enjoyed showing you how to make these and I would love to see what you guys create. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you soon. Bye everyone.